Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Sai De Silva and I am a fashion content creator where I talk a lot about fashion and in this vlog today we are going to be hitting New York Fashion New York Fashion Week. If you are new here, I hope that you will stick around and subscribe to this video. And I want to apologize. I am in Miami and guess what? It is loud as hell in here. I've been wearing my sunglasses. My face is looking a little, you see the dents from the sunglasses. Nevertheless, Let's jump into New York Fashion Week. I'm gonna narrate some of this video because New York Fashion Week was weird, okay? It was bizarre, it wasn't like what I was used to. There used to be tons of shows going on, but now there was like one show a day. The whole situation was bizarre, but you know what? They're having a wedding right here, so I think we might have to take it inside. It's a little dark in there, but let's do this. Okay, much better darling. Now that we don't hear planes, trains, and automobiles all over the place. So let's jump right into this. I did a lot more stories than I actually did like vlogging, which I'm very disappointed in myself. I feel like I say that all the time. I feel like I'm letting you guys down. You know what I'm saying? But I wanted to bring you along. So I'm going to use a lot of my stories and we're going to kind of go over everything that was done. So we kicked off New York Fashion Week with the Vogue and Oscar de la Renta party, Vogue 100 party that I went to. Now, mind you, remember from last week's video, I wore the outfit on the wrong day. I was supposed to wear it to this party and the dinner and I did not. So I had to wear something else. So I wore a Stella McCartney blazer dress there and I paired it with an Oscar de la Renta bag. There was a bunch of influencers that are some of my friends that came to this event. Valeria came from Miami, she was there. You kind of see us quite often together as well as Jessica Wang, who is one of my closest friends in this industry. Love Jess, like if you follow me on Instagram, you would see that her and I are always together. I feel like from day one, we started a bond seven years ago and have never left each other's side. So it's really nice to have like that person. But this party was so much fun, but yeah, it was very chill. It wasn't like something that was super elaborate, like another party that I went to this week. Kind of just like seeing everyone again, chatting, having a few drinks, wasn't anything over the top. So the second day of New York Fashion Week was Victor Glumad. I literally had one show a day. It wasn't, anything that was that was just too much. I felt like at one point, because I did have glam, only prepping to do one show was a little bit disappointing, but Victor Glumad was great. I think the collection was very monotone. It had its like peaks, uh, but Victor Glumad, he designs very classic sleek pieces, like the perfect black dress, which I wore to the show, and I wore it with a puffer jacket and a pair of boots. I kept things super simple. I also took the train there. Your girl likes to take the train, you know? I can't be running around in Ubers all the time, especially when there's traffic. Okay, so let's skip on to what happened after that. <gasps> that was the night of the Love Shack fancy party. This party was the party of the year. I mean, my husband went. It was the most spectacular party I have ever been to. So my friend Rebecca turned 40. She owns Love Shack Fancy. She also launched her couture collection that night. And it was literally like everybody and their mom was there. This felt like someone's reception wedding. I could not believe this was a 40th birthday party. I literally was like, looked at my husband at one point and was like, I think I need a do-over. Like, I don't understand what's happening here, but I need a do-over for my entire life. Every party I ever had, I needed to do a double take. I obviously didn't do life right after looking at this 40th birthday party. There were literally like 40 cakes, not just, not, we're not talking tiny like Carvel ice cream cakes here. We're talking about layers on layers type cakes. There were like beautiful macaroons and performances all through the room. Rebecca changed her, her outfit three different times, including like a custom Vera Wang outfit, the florals, the drinks, the champagne. It looked like everyone was just wanted to take a breath of fresh air that New York City was back. I felt like Rebecca single-handedly brought back New York City with this party. Everyone was on best behavior. Like no one was an a-hole. Everybody was having a good time. People were so happy to see people without a mask on. It was a vibe. Like I was so happy that I made it to this party and I did not miss it and I was here um, to celebrate. And Rebecca, she just has this like love and happiness. It kind of exudes onto everyone. Like it's just like spewing out of her pores. 
Um, she's just a very happy person and having one of those people in your life is really, really great because you feed off that energy. So everyone's energy that night was amazing. After that party, I was dead though. I do want to say my husband was talking so much. I'm like, boo, you've got to be quiet. Like, <laughs> you gotta keep it quiet, okay? He was literally making so many friends. You would think that he's never seen people in his life. He was like, hey, hey, hi. Hi, hi. Nevertheless, we ended up going home really, really late. Um, he was a little bit hungover the next day. Luckily, I didn't drink that much. I did dance a lot, so my feet were killing me. Day three of Fashion Week, again, only had one show. It was Ulta Zora. I saw Valeria there and Jessica was there. Afterwards, we just three, we just had dinner together. It was a very quiet day. I had glam that day, which I was kind of sad about because I actually didn't have any time to kind of like really take photos of it and I love giving my glam team credit because they are absolutely amazing. So Navasha did my hair and she did like these cool like three different ponytail, I mean three different braids and they had like a very blunt cut to them which was, it was beyond, like I loved it. So I'm hoping I can do that exact style again in Milan or Paris so I can get some footage of it. But Altazora was very beautiful, lots of coats. Uh, they had this sequin, beautiful sequin dress at the end and it was gold. They also had some in black and silver. It was so loud. You can hear like the model coming from around the corner. I was like, hmm, this is the kind of outfit that I need. I need them to hear me coming. They're like, oh, that's just Sai. Sai's coming. <laughs> no, so it was a very, it was a nice show. Very, again, over really quickly. The venue was beautiful. The venue was in um, Financial District in the Woolworth building, I believe. So it had this like very New York City aesthetic to it. Saw a few friends, fashion friends that came into town and that's it. And then after that, we went to dinner. That particular show wasn't until 8 p.m. that night. So I had some stuff to shoot earlier in the day, like organic content and sponsored content. And then after that, I ended up going straight into glam around five or six o'clock. And literally it was just that. And a, and a dinner. I feel like I'm disappointing you guys, but I promise you there was really not a lot going on. Day four was a busy day for me. I had two shows. Okay, so the day started off with Carolina Herrera, which was stunning. Wes Gordon is the creative director for Carolina Herrera and he does no wrong. He does not miss. He, he gets what this brand is about and he's made it young and he's made it fresh and he has put the brand back on the map. I just think that he does a phenomenal job with the gowns and like, take a look at, take a look at the show. It is just so stunning. Now he did have one particular pink dress that reminded me of another brand. However, the little silhouette was different of it, but we all are influenced by other brands. So totally fine, but it was stunning. It gave me loofah vibes, but make it fashion. There was a yellow gown that I love. There was even a tiny little mod pink dress that was a mini with these beautiful pink bows. It was very girly. It debuted on Valentine's Day. So I felt like it was very appropriate for the occasion. So we did that and then I jumped in the car with my girl Jess and then we, we took some photos and then we went back downtown. I went home, I got dressed and I changed into this outfit by Patu. It's like this all monochromatic beige outfit and I wore it with a pop of color. What color is it? I have an orange Bottega bag. It's kind of hard to like mentally remember everything that's going on. So I have this orange Bottega bag that I wore with the outfit and I got that shot. We did that show at Spring Studios. It was very quick. And then after that, I went home. There was like really not much going on. Was that Valentine's Day? I think that was Valentine's Day. And then I went home and me and the family, I think we had sushi or something. My husband and I had some wine and we hung out and literally I was passed out, okay? Then day five, we're flying through the week, aren't we? So day five, I had to shoot organic content. I shot a campaign for Calvin Klein. They have bedding. So I did the bedding campaign in my house. I had a new photographer that I just met. She came over and she helped me shoot. Something like that. Hi guys. Yeah, these are great. It's always hard shooting with a new photographer because they don't know you, you don't know them. And like, it can be a little bit awkward or like, it's it's definitely very hard to vibe with, with new people, but she did a really good job. She's not from New York, she was just visiting and she was introduced to me through someone else. But we got the shots and we got it done. 
afterwards I got dressed and I went to Proenza Risi so I didn't go to the show but sometimes they have a Risi that you can get invited to so you can actually see the clothes up close and personal you can feel them um, you can also look at the show and see the models in them Risi's I actually really like because I do get to see and touch the collection and really get an idea of what these fabrics look like up close versus them being on the model and sometimes on the model with the lights and everything like everybody's zooming past you and you could miss a lot of things so I went to Proenza checked out their fall winter 2022 collection and it was gorgeous so let me show you some of my favorite items this is a small this is a large this is a new piece for their collection also it's really nice All right, new accessories little coin purses that you can kind of hang around your neck but I really want to show you these shoes I thought these were cool completely different there's like this toe imprint you're either gonna love it or hate it and I just think it's a, a really cool um, and fresh take on boots they also come in black I don't know tell me how you feel about them all right and then let's get into the collection for fall 2022 look at this That's with this dress. Look at this. I really like this. I, I, I like the play on the sweater. I like the textures. I like the shape. Love a good leather trouser. Oh, look at this. This is amazing. Love this. My favorite things about the collection were the sweaters. I really liked, they had a lot of asymmetrical cuts, which I really liked. It was just kind of like a play on, like every winter we get new sweaters, right? So it's kind of like, how do we jazz things up? And I think they did a good job with that. Uh, another thing about their collection, which I found very interesting, they had flats, but the flats had toes, like these imprint of your toes in them. First of all, let me tell you a story. When I was young, I wanted 5411s so bad. If you're not from New York, 5411s are Reebok classics. And if you know, when you wear them after a while, not even after a while, they're so cheap. If you wear them for a little bit, two weeks, your knuckles are imprinted in them. And I remember being like, dad, I need a new pair of sneakers because these are old. Like you can see the imprint of my feet. And he's like, so they work, there's not holes in it, but it was so embarrassing and mortifying. I have to walk around school with these old sneakers. It's like, you can't give me $54.11 to get a new pair of sneakers. Like <laughs> this was my thought process. So when I saw them at Proenza, I was like, um, this is bringing me back to 5411s in junior high school. But I thought they were really cool and when I touched them, for some reason I thought they looked like ceramic almost, like someone like did like a whole clay molding and put them in the oven or something. But when I touched them, they were so soft. I was so intrigued by them. I was kind of like, mm, do I need a pair? <laughs> I think I kind of want a pair. But they had them in boots too and I just thought that they were really cool. It's just something different. And I like that they brought it to Proenza. Proenza also had some awesome jackets and Proenza white label is also coming out with some really cool like longer white puffer jackets that of course is not part of their fall winter 22 collection but i will say that is going to be here this winter and it's going to be awesome so then after that michael Kors. 
Michael Kors was bomb.com because Miguel performed. Michael Kors is always bomb. But Miguel performed and I thought it was such a cool, like different take on fashion. So he performed on the stage while the girls were walking around. So it's like you had like double the action. You didn't know where to look. You're like one minute you're looking at fashion and then the next minute you're looking at Miguel on stage and you're like, what's happening? So it wasn't, again, it wasn't a very long performance, but I thought it was really well executed. <laughs> the Michael Kors team like I think that they do a phenomenal job they're very sweet and very generous there was lots of paparazzi that was like the day to get glam if you need a glam that day that was the day to get the glam that was fun I had a glam team come over and help me out I did have a hiccup at first I will say unfortunately Navasha had a um, family emergency so she couldn't do my hair that night so I had to get someone last minute to show up to my house within an hour um, and I did make it happen so luckily we did have some like some glam because that was the day that you're like i need to show up you know what i'm saying i shot outside that day it was freezing and i literally had on like nothing basically nothing after michael kors was the pro ball show um that was the last and final show on the last day i think that was the sixth day and it was not until 3 p.m i actually didn't do any glam or any makeup for this because it was like an afternoon show and i was like i'm done here like your girl is sleepy. So we ended up going to this show. It was super cool. I have these Ray-Ban Story sunglasses, which I don't know what I did with them. I have to, I should show them to you. I just don't know where I put them. But you can record through the frames. And I did uh, a collaboration with Ray-Ban Stories for these sunglasses. And sometimes I don't know about brands until they come to me and they want to collaborate. And I'm selective of who I collaborate with. And I want to say I'm very happy. I'm very happy with that collaboration because I genuinely do love them. I mean, I'm in Miami right now and I literally like was recording everyone walking around and they look like regular Ray-Bans. You say, hey, Facebook, take a video and they literally start recording everything that you're looking at. So I went to the Proval show and I used them and it's almost like showing people your point of view, right? While you're still being present. So there's no need for me to hold my phone and videotape everything when I can just look at you and I'm like recording. Now, if I'm trying to catch you in the action, and I just press a little button, I could be recording you saying some inappropriate things or catching you do some things, you know what I'm saying? So there's two sides to every story, but for the most part, I think it's a great idea, especially for something like Fashion Week when all you wanna do is really just look at the clothes and the, and the designs and everything. You can actually be present, but also be recording at the same time. So we did that, and then after that, we went to Jessica's house, it was me, and uh, some other people and we all just went over and like had some wine and cheers to the end of New York Fashion Week. As soon as New York Fashion Week was done, the next day I packed my stuff and I came to Miami because I have a dinner with Zimmerman, which I will get into in the next vlog, but I'm only down here for 48 hours and I leave tomorrow and guess what? We are packing to go to Milan going to Milan and then we're going to go to Paris so we are going to be gone for quite some time so stay tuned for a lot more fashion content with that said guess what guys it is time for me to go I have got to go so your girl is going to dinner however I did just have a lunch but I'm gonna wrap things up and I wanted to just recap everything for you just because I love sharing these videos. So again, if you are new here, if you think I'm a vibe, make sure you subscribe, make sure you comment down below. Also give me a thumbs up and I will see you beautiful people in next week's video. Deuces.